This is the Savage Nation Memorial Day weekend. Welcome to the program. We're playing the salute to the Marine Corps and the Marine Corps hymn. And it's a little quiet right now. And as it's quiet, I'm serious. Think about all those crosses you see as you drive by on highways, especially the veteran cemeteries. In the, today, of course, only the veteran cemeteries. What did they die for? Did they die storming the beaches of Normandy along with the other troops? Did they die at Kaysan? Did they die so that Obama could be president and blame the founding fathers for gridlock in Congress? Did they die so this gang from Chicago could seize total power and make a misery of the United States of America, putting everyone into a state of shock as to what they're getting away with and how fast they're doing it? They're conducting a knockout game on the American people. That's right. It's a political knockout game being conducted by the Democrat Party. Yesterday, Obama gave a speech before a group of billionaires in Chicago. I'll repeat that again. At a Democratic fundraiser in Chicago Thursday night, Mr. Obama told a small group of billionaires that there are several hurdles to keeping Democrats in control of the Senate, recapturing the House. And he said one of those problems is the fact that the Senate was set up by the Founding Fathers with two uh, senators per state, regardless of population. And he complained. He said, obviously, the nature of the Senate means that California has the same number of Senate seats as Wyoming. That puts it as a, a disadvantage, Mr. Obama said. And, of course, as you well know, there are two senators per state. And there was a reason for that. But then Obama doubled down, and he blamed demographics for the inability of the Democrat Party to gain more power, saying this. Listen carefully now. This is what the Marines died for. This is what the Army uh, died for. This is what the Air Force pilots bombed for. So that this demagogue could take over the country while you slept and say the following. He said, quote, Democrats tend to congregate a little more densely in cities such as New York and Chicago. And our demagogue said it gives Republicans disproportional clout in Congress. And then he threw in the punchline before the billionaires, quote, so there are some structural reasons why, despite the fact that Republican ideas are largely rejected by the public, it's still hard for us to break through, Mr. Obama said. Now, what he's doing here, of course, is now blaming the Constitution and the Founding Fathers for his failures and the fact that the American people can see that the king has no clothes. He's setting it up so that they finally don't blame him. He's always passing the buck. Harry Truman said the buck stops. Harry Truman said the buck stops here. Obama will be remembered for many things, but one of the things he should be remembered for is saying the buck stops there. It's always someone else's fault. It's never his policies that are so out of the ken of normalcy in the Democrat Party itself. It's someone else's fault. And now it's the founding fathers and the fact that there's two senators per state. Well, actually, in the state of California, I wish there were six senators. Then maybe I'd have a representative. Barbara Box, the bagel doesn't represent me. Die Fi, the insider trader, doesn't represent me. I have no senator. I haven't had a senator in the state of California since I moved here in 1974. I haven't had a congressman representing me since 1974, the year I moved to California. It's a state-owned a holy by the monopoly called the Demon Cat Party. But you don't want to hear this. It's a long weekend. Either you're in your car, I don't know where, on the way to the airport, you're getting ready for your slathering of the beef, the gathering of the grief. You're getting together for the family weekend, which is nice. It's always good. It looks You look forward to it till it actually happens, and then nothing is ever what you hope it is for most of us. That's That's the way life is. Life is a series of hopes and dreams that come crashing down around our feet which is why it's good to be bipolar and always expect the worst because you'll never be wrong and you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> I had a friend who was driving a couple of hours yesterday who was listening to the Savage Nation the whole day and he said, I couldn't stop listening. He said, everything you did was captivating. He said, all the sound. He said, all the pauses, all the music. He said, even when you got angry, it sounded mirthful. I don't understand it. I wasn't trying to be mirthful. When we talked about the white privilege conference, I was really trying to alert the uh, listeners to what they're supposed to do. But he found it not funny, but intriguing and captivating. 
And so what can you do? That's what I do. Basically, it comes down to the world as I see it. And let me tell you a little story. Most people are not tuned into politics right now at all. No matter where you are, <clears throat> no matter how political you are, there's only so much you could take, which is why Fox's ratings are down. They were way down on uh, primary evening on Tuesday, and they're a good bellwether of where the people are at. They didn't care. They can only take so much of Dem versus Republican. If I said the gobbler beat the Tea Party, most people don't even know who the gobbler is, nor, nor why it's important. The gobbler beat the Tea Party in Kentucky, the gobbler, Mitch McConnell, the guy with the gullet. I'm nothing against him. Actually, I'm glad the gobbler won. The thing is this. There's room for all of us uh, on the uh, right side of things. You don't have to kill one side to have the other thrive. And so uh, I don't know that I want to do this part of the show today. In fact, I'm going to talk about some other topics. Here's one. Cal graduate sues in and out over spilled coffee. That's right. Shyster lawyers again. A UC Berkeley graduate who was severely burned after spilling hot coffee on her, on her lap filed a lawsuit Thursday against in and out Burger claiming employees in Oakland refused to call an ambulance. Hetty Chen, oh, she learned the racket well. Hetty Chen, a UC Berkeley graduate. They didn't teach me how to sue when I got my PhD from Berkeley. I actually had to do something, but I guess Hetty Chen must have studied the law. And she learned that uh, if you spill coffee on your lap, you can blame the, the restaurant. So her lawyer, Kirk Boyd, said what they were supposed to do was call 911 because the operators know that. There's a policy of not calling 911, and therefore they violated their duty of care to customers. So this, this, this wench spills coffee on her lap, and then sues In-N-Out Burger. 10 o'clock at night when she and a friend stops at the In-N-Out Burger driver, drive, whatever, for coffee and a sandwich. The lawsuit alleges that the employee handed Chen, who was wearing short shorts, an excessively hot paper cup with no protective sleeve. I guess the shyster lawyer can next, can next sue when they give a lukewarm cup of coffee to someone and say that they didn't give her the proper... Uh, hot coffee. I guess the shyster lawyer can then say the coffee wasn't hot enough. See, this is what happens when you let degenerates into the law profession. I've done show after show on the low level of people going into law schools. You don't understand the law was never intended to be subverted like this by these low-life shyster lawyers. You don't understand that. These tort lawsuits are a distortion and perversion of law itself. That's not what the law was written for. Do you know that in Europe there are, that law, uh, tort lawsuits don't exist? You don't know that. All the libs who say they love Europe so much really ought to import some of that part of the legal system from Europe. Yeah, they ought to say no tort lawsuits permitted in America, and then 98% of the lawyers in this country would have, have to find a legitimate job. And so this is what happens. Cal graduate sues over spilled coffee. Uh, there's nothing you could say on that. I've given you two stories already. Obama blames founding father's structural design of Congress for gridlock. Nothing you could say on that. Cal graduate sues in and out over spilled coffee. Nothing you could say on that. Here's the next story for you if you think that I pick on only one side of the aisle and one type of personality. City of Oakland probes disability pay of ex-cop who's now an FBI agent. You heard me. Oakland, California officials are investigating why a former police officer is collecting $52,000 a year in medical disability benefits from the city even though he has been working as an FBI agent in Boston. The unusual case of FBI Special Agent Aaron McFarlane, 41, came to the attention of Oakland officials after the agent was identified last week as the federal officer who shot and killed a key figure last year in the Boston Marathon bombing. You see, this cop is collecting disability under the California Public Employees Retirement System, which is awarded when a worker is unable to perform the usual duties of his or her current position. And despite this disability that he's collecting, he went and took a job with the FBI. He took a job with the FBI. So what kind of vetting has the FBI done? Well, I don't know. I'll let you decide. He became an Oakland officer years ago, and then he injured himself um, a few months or a few years after he was hired by Oakland, and he uh, resigned or something on disability. Uh, four years after joining the police force, he became disabled. And we don't know how he became disabled. He probably twisted his ankle or something. And he's been collecting 52000 bucks a year. And Mr. McFarlane then joined the FBI in 2008, according to the Boston Globe. And guess who this McFarlane is? 
He is the FBI agent who shot Ibrahim Todashev in his Orlando apartment after Todashev allegedly flung a table at him and brandished the metal pole at a Massachusetts state trooper. So this suspect was tied to a chair. There were three cops there, two, two Massachusetts state troopers and this FBI agent. And after questioning this suspect for four hours, they claim he threw a chair at them and they had to shoot him. It was suspect from the get-go. Now, look, I hate terrorists, and I think that they should be prosecuted to the full extent of the law when they're found guilty. But I suspected that this was a, a, venge, a revenge shooting in that, in that room. I think they executed him. That's the way it looked to me from day one. Now it turns out that this very same guy who was on this, this questionable disability uh, collection works for the FBI. So how did the FBI hire him? Don't call me on that. You can't call me on that either. Those are three stories. And now, since you've listened intently for the last 17 minutes and 57 seconds, it's time for a little laughter, and God bless the sound God, because he's given us Nancy Pelosi in clip number three. Without her, the show would not be complete. Let's hear old Nancy Pelosi on the VA scandal. I don't know that if you want to change, if you change somebody at the top, that means the system. You know, in other words, there's some of this is intrinsic into the system, and, and uh, just changing people at the top may appear to represent change, but it's the culture, it's the system, uh, and, it's, and it's the challenge that they face. Emphasis on the word face. It's the challenge that they face. And the perennial smile and the ears being pinned back from the Botox is what she has to face every day, not realizing that the American people don't believe a word that Daffy Duck says, not one word. Nineteen minutes after the hour, open for business on Open Mic to Mike Friday, 855-407-282. All the news of the day and more right here on the New World Order, the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage.